Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about Christensen's failure theory and specifically, does it work for polymers? So Christensen wrote a book uh, on the theory of materials failure. And this is a book that aimed to put order and organization into the field of failure characterization and failure criteria. Sounds great to me. It's been pretty confusing for a long time how you should predict failure under monotonic loading to failure of a polymer. And uh, this book tries to answer that in a very specific way. And it was developed by, it's written by uh, Professor Christensen, who was at Stanford. He wrote some other books that were very well received related to viscoelasticity or composite materials. So, so this book is an interesting book because this guy usually knows what he's talking about. So, so what I'll talk about here today is what is he really proposing and does it work for polymers, which wasn't the main topic of his book. So the first thing you need to address here is under monotonic load into failure, what quantity do you focus on? Do you say that failure occurs at a given strain or a given stress or whatever? And Christensen uh, makes the argument that it should be stress. And his arguments are listed here. Stress works in fraction mechanics, it works for ductile metals, is based on dislocation motion, is based on it, and so forth. So he kind of says there should be stress. One thing to keep in mind though, for polymers, sometimes the stress strain curve looks like what I showed to the right. And what we see here is that the stress becomes almost flat and strain is, well, how would you predict failure then? It would be certainly kind of more convenient if strain was the failure condition in that condition. Um, the second thing to point out about Christensen's approach is that he completely redefines the whole concept of failure. So what you consider failure of a polymer part is what he would consider frag fragmented failure. That's when fragments are generated. And he says effective failure occurs before that. And his theory is based on this effective failure, not fragmented failure. And he says that failure stress is defined from this equation shown here, when the dissipated energy is equal to twice the recoverable energy. And uh, what these are defined as, you can see in the figure here with these two shaded areas. Kind of interesting, absolutely not what people typically talk about, uh, but it has some interesting ideas, I guess, when you think of it that way. Well, if you redefine it this way, maybe this is of importance. And uh, the problem is, of course, there are some challenges for polymers. It's uh, in order to get the recoverable energy. Well, how do you know what that is? It may not be a linear elastic unloading response, typically on many polymers. So it's some challenges there, for sure. Um, let's review first a Mises failure condition. That's a very simple condition that virtually everyone has heard of, and you can write it in this form. The sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3 are the principal stresses, and when this condition on the left reaches a critical value, t squared in this case, you can say a failure occurs according to the Mises condition. So it's a safe region, and it's a failure region if you're outside of that domain. This does not work very well for some thermoplastics that I will talk about. But again, this is not what Christensen proposes. He's saying this is a basic condition that needs to be extended. So what has he extended? This is the Christensen failure condition. And here it is. It's basically a Mises stress on the right. And then there's some other term here before it. And he introduces two parameters. One is T, the, the tensile strength. And C is the uniaxial compressive strength. So the two parameters, the tensile and the compressive strength, are the numbers that control the whole failure envelope of the material. And there are some relationships between them that T is less than C. And if it's in ductile limits and the brittle limits, and here they are. For many polymers, according to his book, the T divided by C is around a half, or perhaps a little bit larger. So that's what he proposes, and this is his failure condition. What I wanted to do is to see, well, how does this work? Before I do that, though, let's take a look in PolyUmod. In the PolyUmod library that we have developed, we actually support the failure condition supported, uh, developed by Christensen. It's available for you. You can calibrate these parameters in M calibration if you're interested. It contains strain rate effects, temperature effects, brittle and ductile failure, and also no failure in compression, if that's what you like. So it's a little bit extension of the Christensen approach, and it's available in the PolyUmod library and M calibration if you want to play around with this. But back to my example, I wanted to see how well this works for a given thermoplastic material that I have data for. So I'll selecting here 
ultra high molecular weight polyethylene is a polymer that I tested and worked with a lot. And uh, here's some data that I presented in the previous video where I tested this both in uniaxial tension to failure and a biaxial punch to failure test. And I know the, the stress state at failure for both of these loading modes. And what I showed before was that the MISA stress is not the same at failure in uniaxial and biaxial loading. In fact, surprisingly enough, the, the MISA stress is higher in biaxial loading than it is in punch loading. So that's how the data looks for this material. If I apply this now using Christensen's approach, I can put this together and kind of, I have two data points. Can I figure out what's going on here? So I'm selecting a, a T divided by C of 0 0.5. You know that T, if T is equal to C, we get Mises and that doesn't work. So T divided by C should be less than uh, one. I'm picking 0.5 as that's an example. Makes the math pretty easy in unaxial tension. Surprisingly enough, I still get sigma equal to T. So that's what's going on. But in biaxial tension in this equation, I see that the failure occurs at 0 0.62, which is lower than a uniaxial tension. So what I've shown here is that for ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, my data indicates that uh, that's different. So Christensen's failure condition doesn't actually work for ultra high molecular weight polyethylene in biaxial loading compared to uniaxial loading. So I'm a little bit uh, surprised by that perhaps, but also remember, He's using a difference between fragmented failure and effective failure. And I like to think more in terms of the fragmented failure when things actually break apart. So to summarize, Christensen's theory is interesting. It's very different. It makes you think a little bit what's going on here. And uh, therefore, I think it's interesting to talk about. And it hasn't been really tested that much for polymers, even though the book has been out for a number of years. And if I were to pick a failure condition, so my summary is I probably would not use the Christensen theory. I would probably use what I talked about in the previous video when I mentioned the effective strain that depends on the stress triaxiality. That's a more general approach. It allows me more freedom to match data that I'm interested in. So that would probably be my choice. But you can use whatever approach you like. And if you have any questions or any comments about this, ask them below.